UW360 is proudly supported by BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union. Pacific Office Automation, copy, print, workflow, and IT. Problem solved. Oh, look at how, how far away it is. yeah, pull it right up tight against that. It's long been said that a family that plays together stays together. And if that's true, the Reddicks side. are off to a good start. Look at the A right there. Oh. So Though it looks like child's play, this Seattle area family is helping unravel one of the most perplexing questions facing biologists today. Oh, whoa. <laughs> How proteins fold into intricate shapes. So now shake and wiggle. The Reddicks are among tens of thousands of volunteers worldwide playing a free online video game called Fold It, invented at the University of Washington. Boy, is it moving. But while the game was created by scientists, most players are anything but. I would say less than half of them have any background whatsoever in biology. We don't. And uh, I didn't even take high school biology. With respect to demographics, I mean, we have grand grandmothers with just high school education spend huge amounts of time. We have 13-year-old kids doing really well at the game. The natural thing to do, and this is what people are very good at, is to basically say, okay, I'm going to open it a little bit. You can hear some of the bubbles popping. And now I'm going to try to push this thing in. UW computer scientist Zoran Popovich says what the players do have in common is the propensity for spatial reasoning, something we're born with. It's a valuable skill in predicting proteins because proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids that fold into unique three-dimensional forms to carry out countless functions in the body. And here you can basically see there's a competition of groups, who's the best person individually. Popovich hopes his video game can attract and harness the skills of a variety of different people, including those with very little background in science. If you ever look at these biochemistry books, they're like this thick on average, right? So you cannot tell people, well, go read this book and then come play our game. You know, that's just a total non-starter. Sheets together would be a good one. So every new person plays about 20 to 30 levels that we have created specifically for the purpose of being pulled in and knowing absolutely nothing about molecules and proteins to the point where they can actually start going on to uh, real puzzles. Let it shake out. Players are given tools to shake, wiggle, and tug at a protein structure to force it towards its most natural state. Very good. A few years ago, UW scientists led by David Baker invented a protein folding program called Rosetta to do this job. And they asked volunteers to donate downtime on their home or work computers to help run the powerful program, which tries out millions of possible configurations. But as volunteers watched the process on their screensavers, some felt the computer's approach was not always the most efficient. People, after we had this running for a while, uh, wrote in and said, uh, you know, I've been watching these proteins folding up on my computer monitor, and I see that in some cases it looks like the computer is doing the wrong thing. And I think it's, you know, it's moving part of the protein left when it should move it right. Inspired by these observations, Dr. Baker hoped volunteers might also contribute downtime from their brains for protein research. The result was Fold It. Through the game, people have proven they are actually better than computers at predicting some protein structures. Fold It is sort of the first one that has shown the scientific results can actually come out of uh, um, this kind of massive problem solving by people. But I think that the, over the next five, 10 years, uh, there will be more and more of those things. I'm going to do a science puzzle. Such predictions don't surprise people like Greg and Sandy Reddick, folded players who rank in the top 100 of some 57,000 players worldwide. While they thrive on the competition, they say their strongest motivation is knowing their game playing has a purpose. Because understanding protein design can aid in creating new drugs, among other things. It's very interesting to know that this might help. There might be something useful that comes out of it. We might design a drug that actually solves flu or HIV or whatever. I don't know if anything I personally do will benefit society as a whole, but there's a chance, and that's cool. Sandy and Greg also know that their problem-solving strategies will be analyzed by UW scientists to develop new algorithms to improve computer programs. That human aspect of knowing when to quit and when to go on 
really, I think, is something that's very hard to program correctly uh, for Rosetta and something that humans do intuitively. Greg, a former Microsoft programmer, also sees the potential in tapping into the skills of top players. One of the things that just puzzles me about some of the players is that they can look at a protein and just go, that's wrong, that can't be there, it's got to be somewhere else, and they know where to put it. The other interesting thing is that the computers do what the programmer tells them. So they have a particular thing and they keep doing it over and over again. What people do is they adapt. And if you get really frustrated with it, then what do you do? Start over. Reset <laughs> puzzle, that's right. And there you go. And that's sort of the exciting thing about this, is that it means that sort of what we can solve uh, with people is still unknown. And congratulations, you Stop. won.